Hey guys, we're here with another video for the digital background swap I'm doing with Peg, Rob, uh, Peg Robinson and Shell C. So this month uh, we are working on a fall themed background swap. Uh, we all did digital backgrounds. The ones I did will be free and available to you in the link uh, Dropbox link in the description below. So go ahead and go over there and download them if you'd like to use the ones I did in some artwork. And I'd love that you share that and let me know what you did. And you can do that by joining my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, and share over there. Make sure to tag me in the post. All right, that being said, the ones I did are that one and that one. Yep, these two. And then the others, and I don't remember who did who, which I can guess that I think Peg did this one. I think Peg did those and this one. And then Shell, C, and Bea. <laughs> I don't know who did who. I didn't know, but they're all cool. So we are gonna use them today to create a piece of artwork now. I've tried to think of different ways to use these digital backgrounds in the other videos that I've done for you already, um, and I'll include those videos in the description. Um, and in the description of those are everyone else's videos. So I would love to have you go show everyone some love, and their fall-themed videos are also going to be in this description. So the short story there is make sure you check out the video description because there's a ton of stuff in there. Okay. So this month, I thought I would really um, go back to my roots and grab a stretch canvas, which I did. For some reason lately, I am just all about painting on canvas right now, and so I just can't seem to get away from that. But I really thought maybe I would try doing some sort of encaustic type or uh, transparent layered type artwork, which actually I've never really done before. I thought that would be fun this time. So I have a canvas here that's already got a base layer of paint on it, and all I did uh, and it had to dry, so i already done that part already. So what I did is I took my color inspiration journal, which is um, something that's here on my YouTube channel. Again, I can put the link in the, in the description. Um, and it has all these different uh, photos I found inspirational, either because of their composition and or coloring. And so then I made a two-page spread for each one or each set of drawings. And what I've discovered since doing this is they inspire me constantly every day. So I took one of them that I thought was fall themed in, in color, which was this one. And using that particular set of pages, I chose my colors. I literally put blobs of paint on the canvas and then used a straight edge to just do this. All the way across and I kept doing that until it was blended just enough not too much I also made sure to get some paint on the edges and then I've left it for a couple of days to dry so now we're gonna go on to the next step what is that gonna be exactly I don't know I'm gonna speed forward through the process and if I need to I'll stop and explain what I'm doing I'll be right back back I'm gonna talk you through it and we're gonna try to be as quick as possible I'll edit out what I can so I'm going to go through the fall backgrounds and I'm going to pick ones whose colors I think will work best with the canvas and we're going to start there. Does that mean I'm not going to include the others? Of course not. But I'm going to start with these. I think they'll work the best. I may include this red one of pegs, um, but we're going to put it aside for the minute. The one I want to start with is actually this brown one. Again, I don't exactly remember at the time of filming who this is, but if I can figure it out, I'll put their name like right here, okay? All right, so we're gonna just do this the easy way. And we are going to use some, what are you gonna use? I'm gonna use some gloss gel medium. I actually just bought this one today. This is regular gloss gel medium, it's not extra heavy or anything like that. And these are just printed on my inkjet printer. So the ink is not completely water soluble, I mean waterproof. It is water soluble. And the composition, I'm intending it to be fairly abstract. So I'm going to tear pieces, you could cut them. I don't know, right now I just want to tear them. 
and I'm going to use the gel medium and something with a flat edge to glue the pieces of paper on my canvas in a way that accents the paint that's already out there. I don't want to cover it up. I want this to be layered and accented. Yeah. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to add some layers of paper to my canvas and um, probably cover the whole thing up with a thin coat of the gel medium. Dry that and then we'll be back. going to do some more sorry shaky camera some more work on the canvas because we're not done yet by any stretch um, I'm going to use some distress crayons and I'm going to activate them with matte medium instead of water to um, distress crayons when they dry shouldn't move around too much anyway but just to ensure that they don't move around instead of activating them with water I'm going to activate them with matte medium which should make them dry and stay where I put them um, keeping in mind the fall colors themes that we're working on, I'm going to pick colors like this olivey green color called peeled paint and I'm going to accent some of the shapes and colors on the canvas. Um, it's going to be pretty abstract. I'm not really looking to do any particular scene or design. If you see something in the canvas, which I kind of do, but I'm not going to say what it is that I see. Um, I will give you a hint. I seem to be doing them a lot lately. <laughs> um, but um, whatever you see in the canvas is up to your interpretation, but I'm not, yeah, that's as much as you're gonna get out of me. Anyway, let's uh, fast forward through this process and I'll be back.
you'll see that I added uh, in the from the previous clip I added some of the crayon with the matte medium I also took this old Claudine Helmuth Studio G gesso I think I got it Tuesday morning see it was $1.25 either that or Hobby Lobby somewhere where it was on sale for this teeny tiny thing um, and I added some of the matte medium to it to make it a little transparent this gesso is already not very opaque and I just added a little, little, little bit white, white highlights. We're going to do at least one more thing to this. I have a um, gold and copper, uh, not foil, holy cow, this stuff, leaf, uh, <laughs> leaf skin that I made. And I got the idea and directions for doing it from the book. Um, acrylic um, encaustic effects is that the name of it hang on painting for acoustic effects anyway I'll link it in again one more thing in the description below so I got the idea for doing the skin from that book and I want to add a few pieces of it to this canvas uh, maybe one more thing but let's do the gold first and let's see what happens Let's see how, if we can dry some of that so you can see what it looks like. And I can see what it looks like. I think it looks really good, but what I can see. Let's see if we can dry some of it. Um, and here's a tip. When you're drying um, things like gel medium or even acrylic paint and acrylic skin, don't get your heat tool too close or too hot because you'll make it bubble. You're basically drying plastic. Think of it that way. It's a polymer. It's a plastic. So what you're going to do is, if you dry it too quickly and to get it too hot, it's going to just bubble up and do things you probably don't want it to do. So I'd, I'd recommend, if you're new to using a heat tool on your work, um, try a few scraps and see what happens. And um, the best way to use your tool to heat your paint and get it to dry fast. All right, let's get it dried and I'll be right back. Okay, there you have it. It's not completely dry. I'm going to insert a picture here of it, completely dry. Um, as you saw, I did go over the whole thing with an uneven, purposefully textured coat of the gloss medium, uh, gloss gel medium. This is Golden's regular gloss gel medium. Um, so that it would have that little bit of that um, shiny. I think you're picky. Yeah, there you go. A shiny finish and it also seals everything in. I like the way this turned out. I don't know about you but I think it's an interesting piece of artwork. Um, does that mean I'll leave it alone and not put anything else on it later? Probably. <laughs> no guarantees. Hang on. As I say that I'm thinking it needs something. And it, You know what it needs? It needs some calm. It needs some solid. Um, it's a very busy piece. So let's get 
something we can put some paint on. Maybe that thing that had the little dish that had the um, matte medium on it. Let's see how. Which is now all wet. Okay. I've got a flat brush. I've got some Dina Wakely Media Paint in gray. And we are going to grab some olive. And I'm going to use for the for some white. I'm going to use the white gesso. So generally, I like in my paintings a balance of busy and calm flat space. And I just feel like this needs some of that. I should probably be waiting until the gel medium is dry. <laughs> I'm not going to though. Um, and I'm not even going to use a brush. I know I pulled this out just because it was handy, but I'm actually going to use something else. I have a few options of weird, unusual um, tools, including this. Does anybody recognize this? It's a hair coloring brush. I like to use weird tools in my art, um, including uh, rubber tools. I actually have a number of flat edge tools and squeegees. I think my one squeegee is in the other room drying. But we'll use either this frosting spreader or that gift card that I had out before. This actually might be a good size for this canvas because it's not very big. Usually I use a bigger squeegee. And so if you do this when the gel medium that you coated everything with is dry um, and you don't like it, you can wipe it off. So there's a, there's a painting tip for you. And I almost never just leave it like that when I do that. I usually come in, because I can pretty much guarantee you every time I've done this ever, I get some paint somewhere where I don't like it. What did we just say? Or there's just too many marks for me. My gel medium, that all that being said, my gel medium is not completely dry. So I feel like I need to add a little bit of black. So we're going to stick some black in our dish. I'm going to use the gift card to just mix it up. Sort of. Not. I'm not going to blend it completely. Baby wipe again, right? Always with the baby wipe. You know what? I don't like it. Oh, but maybe I like that. Hmm. This is me in real time. I'm not fast forwarding through this.
And this is how I really paint, by the way, when I paint on canvas. Do I always start with a collage layer? Not always. But it's about putting down and then taking away. It's about making marks and creating something interesting for me. Now for me, when I'm painting, the dirty baby wipes are good for spreading things around and if you want to take it off, grab a clean baby wipe. Always do the edges, so this is another canvas painting trick. Framing is expensive, so I always just paint the edges, and sometimes I write a blessing around the edges, but I usually just paint the edges. I don't usually frame things unless the client asks me to. Okay, I like that a whole lot. Holy cow. All right, let's grab some more baby wipes. Try to clean up my mess. Okay. So you can see some parts that are still wet, like right here where this white is, that's because the gel medium is still wet. I'm going to let this dry completely and I will insert some pictures here of what it looks like. I love the, I love the black. The black gave me what I thought it needed. So anyway, I hope that you like this and it gives you some ideas of what you can do with digital downloads in your artwork. Try something completely new for you and that's completely out of the box. Grab a little canvas, they're not very expensive. It, use a Michaels coupon, if they're not on sale, you can get it 40% off with a coupon or a Hobby Lobby coupon, um, whatever's closer to you. And try it on a little canvas. It's really not that hard. If you wanna share what you've made, I would love to see it over in my Facebook group, group A Life of Art and Self-Expression. Um, you can find that group and every other place you can find me on the internet in, um, if you click on the link that says Linktree and then my name uh, in the description below. Uh, clicking on that is gonna send you to a list of links for my website, my Facebook groups, my Etsy shop, uh, Amazon affiliate store, Patreon, and so, 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 so much more. So check it out. All the relevant links are in the description below. And the other people um, that are contributing to this hop are also in the description below. I'd love it if you go check them out, go see what they did with their digital downloads and how they made them and show them some love. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye guys.